Experiment Nation, I have a special gift for you. If you're in the Airbnb space or if you're thinking of getting into the Airbnb space, you're an operator with multiple units, your first unit, your hundredth unit, just about to get into Airbnb, you are going to want to get this blueprint that I put together for you. Now, I want to give context of how this was put together because sometimes people assemble these uh, ideas and top 10 lists, top five, top this, and it doesn't have any true valued vetted content. What I've done is I've surrounded myself by the best top short-term rental Airbnb operators in the world. I co-authored a best-selling book with them called Hospitable Host. I've had them on my platform and interviewed them to get the questions that you guys want to learn the most from into the episode, the show, the real estate experiment, as you know. And I've also paid tens and thousands of dollars to be sitting in the room to get these notable insights that we implement ourselves as short-term rental operators. I'm a short-term rental specialist. I'm licensed to do it in the respective markets you know we build ours in georgia we have a management company ourselves we're airbnb super hosts so we not only talk the talk but we walk the walk but we still consistently surround ourselves with the best in the space to get us further ahead and this is what we've put together an airbnb millionaire blueprint where you don't just hear it from me you hear it and it's an aggregate list it's 21 pillars from short-term rental operators worldwide who've implemented this and it's worked and this is the exact same way we've been able to get results and get the same results from implementing these insights that i've pulled from multiple faces right some people have tons of arbitrage units like tj tajani some like bill faith have just a few some like michael shogan has boutique hotels they've scaled and whether you have one unit 10 units or 100 unit or about to get into your first unit you're going to want to have this blueprint that you can utilize universally wherever you are in the world we want to get this i put together we took a lot of time to put this together this year after all that we've been implementing in our lab for you to have a guide that you can leverage right that you can use and, and, and implement we've also given and tagged everybody that we've featured in and giving them credit so you know where the source is coming from and you can check out their instagram you can see that it, there are vetted individuals that we not only work with and trust but learn from because sometimes you get a lot of different information and i want to make sure i give that credit where you can find out that person and we've also if they've been on our show we've also linked the episode within this free blueprint it's the airbnb millionaire blueprint you want to make sure you go to experiment realestate.com once you get there you'll see the pop-up that says i have something for you just scroll down enter your name enter your email and we'll get it right sent to you don't want to sleep on this we've been putting these together for quite some time and i know that it will serve you regardless of where you are in your journey to you have an airbnb millionaire blueprint that has been collectively vetted and has been sourced from operators who are operating at a high scale experimentation you're welcome make sure to go to experimentrealestate.com and get your airbnb millionaire blueprint so that you can also scale to the level of experiment that these practitioners like ourselves have done just for you experimentation we'll see you on the other side Who's this? Oh, you're an entrepreneur? Oh, you're a real estate investor. Oh, you're trying to learn from those who did it. Well, come into the lab then. Put your white coat on, gloves on, notepad, and let's build y'all. Real estate experiment, what is happening y'all? Today I have two practitioners who come into the lab and obviously come in with a craft purpose and partnership and are just the the core pillar that one needs when you're experimenting in vacation home rentals because it all starts about designing and I'm so glad that I got a chance to meet these uh, ladies um and and they were able to give us a master class on what they've mastered again and they're continuing to master because they're practitioners and they're doing it for real for real and I'm so glad to have Jordan McDonough and Bree west in the lab here with me ladies what is happening welcome i feel like we're super overdue what's good welcome thank you <laughs> things are good thanks for having us ruben we are so excited because we have 
you know, mm-hmm. technically been in business for a long time because we have our own short-term rentals that we've designed for, but we've been in business offering design for other people's short-term rentals for about six months now. And things are great. We learned so much and we'd love to share some of these things with you. Yeah. And, and for anyone who's listening and Jordan, welcome as well. Like you guys super humble. You're totally crushing it. Like you're, (laughs) and I'm saying that like definitely follow summer led dot designs on Instagram uh, because they got some properties that are cooking. And um, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, part of the mantra here in the lab is experiment, learn, uh, experiment, fail, learn, repeat. And um, what I love is I, I use the word practitioners intentionally because, uh, you know, we're not the type, we're very selective in who come who, who comes here in the lab and we believe in doing the actual work, right? Being a true practitioner and then offering it as a service, right? Like you understand, you've gone through it. And I think that's very different than, you know, I'm a believer of that across the board for business. It's like, are you writing books about business or did you start a business then write a book, right? So what I love about you, it's, it's, it's not every again. Um, and I'm curious to what you guys actually call yourself as a business, because you guys have such a hybrid, like you're analyzing and you're, you know, designing photography, there's a lot there. And so, uh, what I love though, is that you're able to bring this experience that you've had and kind of put it under one umbrella. And so let me, let me ask Jordan, Jordan, cause you know, <laughs> Bree gave us a little introduction. So yeah, if I meet you, right. And I say, hey, what do you do for a living? Kind of like that TikTok guy. I don't know what his name is. It's like, what do you do for a living? What do you say? I say I'm an interior designer specializing in short-term rentals. So that's kind of like the short title. And then hopefully, you know, that leads to more of a conversation. And then I get into, okay, short-term rentals. What is it? It's a booming industry right now. And we have basically found this really like niche market where we can offer our services. We are very different than like a traditional interior design firm because we aren't just designing to make something look pretty, but we have some, we have market research to base our, all of our designs on. And so it is very much of a different approach. We are very business minded. We know the market, you know, Brie is an investor herself. So we've kind of gone through that same, um, you know, that mantra that you just mentioned, the experiment, fail, learn, repeat. We've kind of already done that oh, for ourselves and we're able, yeah. And now we're able to kind of offer a service where we've kind of done all the experimental kind of side of things and now can offer a product that we know that you're going to, you know, succeed with. So right, yeah, it's, that's kind of all encompassing. Yeah. We, we are kind of a hybrid, but, but that's kind of like the, the line item that we kind of give people, you know, we're, we're interior designers, but only short-term rentals. That is our bread and butter. Niche. I love that. I mean, finding a niche in this industry too is just so, so critical. Um, I guess, Bree, do you, do you describe yourself the exact same way? Do you have a twist on it? Like, how do you introduce yourself? Cause I know you're an investor as well. Like how, how do you introduce yourself? Yeah, no, same way. I mean, I add on like the investing side of it because my husband and I do own nine short-term rental properties. And if you want to yeah. talk about failing in design, we can talk about it. Like obviously all of our properties are cash flowing, but are there things that I regret in the beginning? Absolutely. Like it is all a process of almost like short-term rental design to me is going, just going with it, like doing the market research and having so much fun. Like I just feel Mm -hmm. so lucky because we have, I think more fun than like residential interior designers who just design people's houses um, because we're designing this experience and it, yeah. So same con, like everything that Jordan said, um, as well as investing as well. Like it's, it's a big scope. It's not just like creative design. There's so much that goes into it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, good answer. I'm, I'm obviously, you guys are in alignment, but tell me, how did you, how did, how did this whole empire come together? Like, did you guys know each other from before? Did you like, you know, <laughs> mastermind? Was it like, what's the story? Where'd you guys meet? I don't even, I don't even know this. Where'd y'all meet? It's yeah. cute. Kind of. <laughs> it's in cute. the dorms, freshman year of college. Our are you serious? Were- crazy yeah. in the dorms, had tons of fun. And then we didn't meet until I married my husband. I met him freshman year. So I actually knew Jordan's husband as like a freshman <laughs> boy. Um, but Jordan and her husband, Parker got married later. And that's when we met just kind of hanging out as married couples. 
Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Are y'all newlyweds too? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm three right. years. So, so yeah, we're still in like the oh, newlywed okay. phase. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. We'll toast to us. Good for you. Um, yeah. That's, that's really cool. I mean, that's so funny because you, it just almost happens by nature. I don't know. Are you guys familiar with the yeah. Carwells? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we haven't yeah. met them, but we yeah. follow I, each other. They had a, <laughs> that's cool. No, it's just not even to like country contracts but it was an interesting story because i had him on my on my podcast as well and it was like very similar it was like oh like the husbands and like you know and then <laughs> but you guys went to school too so that's a very interesting um dynamic super cool so like at what point is it like yo we should do something here like did that was that like organic yeah. or did just like you started spending time together like i'm just very curious how this yeah. all came together jordan no it was it was super organic so brie and logan I mean, honestly, it started off when they first started the conversation with Michael and Brie and Logan decided, hey, we're going all in on this short term rental thing. I like was over with Brie, like helping her paint like their long term rental. That's when they decided to sell all of their long term rentals and only go into short term. And and I mean, we're, we're good friends. So we saw a lot of each other, but we were actually at one of their first short term rentals in the Phoenix area. And and we were just up late one night and Brie just started picking my brain. She's like, okay, what would you do here? Like, what about this wall? Like what kind of like wallpaper would you do? And so I just kind of started spitting out ideas and, and it kind of just snowballed from there. Like they started, um, you know, talking to Michael about, you know, this could be a good thing going. Like we should probably start talking about interior design and maybe offering that. And then Brie reached out to me and said, Hey, like, I really want to do this with you. And would you be interested in, in kind of going all in with me? And so I was kind of at a time of life where I wasn't really ready to go all in at once, but I now am. And so now we've kind of both left our corporate jobs and have been doing this together full time for, for just, um, you know, full time for maybe like three, four months. So That's it is amazing. still pretty fresh, but yeah, it was just very organic. And we just knew that it was a good thing going. She has an amazing skill set with like a marketing background with my interior design background, we just made, we made a really good, great partnership. And so we were excited to be able to dive in and offer that to other people. Brie, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What's uh, Jordan's uh, strength that we're going to have like a little bond session here on, on <laughs> yeah. the air. What's her, what's her biggest strength? Oh my gosh. So many. Um, wow. wow. She is just really creative. Like we design in every market in the U S you know, it's not mm -hmm. just like that's, that's a crazy. Florida design. It's, we do cabins, we do Phoenix, we do California. Like it, it is hard to like transition from design style to design style, but she is so good at it. And I think it comes naturally to her, but she also has a background in art curation and interior design. So wow. I think with art, she like appreciates so many different art styles. Um, that's like her passion and her true, like heart's love is art. Mm -hmm. But I just watch her go from designing a cabin one day to this bachelorette party, like house. And it's amazing. She can just transition and do it. It's just that creative mind. Yep, that's awesome. Oh, what do you, um, thanks, Jordan, I told you we're going to get emotional here. I'm, I'm trying oh, to get some tears out. Man. <laughs> what, <laughs> what's uh, what do you think is uh Brie's superpower, Jordan? man Brie, she has first off she has so much ambition she if i didn't have her to be like hey like this can be huge like we need to do this i don't think i would have had the same kind of drive and ambition from from the beginning you know i was like oh this is something fun but she really has a great vision for what our business can be and i really admire that about her she is a dreamer but also you know has that logic behind that that is able to be such a huge driving force. And she has to give herself credit too. She is so creative. She doesn't have like, you know, formal interior design training, but with that marketing background, she knows exactly how we should design for, you know, that persona, um, mm -hmm. that, that perfect client. And so having that is, is really, really beneficial for, for our business. Got it. So I'm curious about this because I hear this all the time and I don't know that it's necessarily true because, you know, you hear a lot of these quotes of like oh like your partner like you you should have strengths and then you should complement their weaknesses etc like do you guys believe in that because again i love to debunk things here maybe it is true maybe it's not true 
is it more of like actually can you be completely just as competent and be in alignment and go and conquer the world and ask who not how for your weaknesses just curious where where, where do you guys stand on that maybe Bria, i'd love to hear like what are your thoughts yeah i mean i feel like we're a combo okay so mm-hmm. in our business i feel like my strength like we have different strengths in a business mindset you know i come from a marketing background i was able to get up our website um some other things that i just I came easily because I've been doing them for years in my marketing firm and that I worked in and same with her. She had these strengths in business, but at the same time with design, it's kind of crazy. Whenever we design together, we're always on the same page. Like I don't Mm -hmm. think that we have argued, I guess you could say about a design choice. Like we go on site to these clients home and we're like, okay, something's missing here. What should it be? And it's like, we both think of the same thing at the same time. Like we are on the (laughs) same page, which makes life really easy because that's our deliverable is design. And we're on the same page with that. Okay. Do you you think that's coachable? Like, do you think you're, because I think one of the things that I saw that you offer is like, oh, like redesign the room. If you know, if you're not, you know, that's one of your packages. So you know, when you're going in just, and, and the reason I'm asking these questions, I'm, these are purposeful questions because I, I genuinely believe that you only can do business with someone once you understand what they do and how they do it. And so I want to get behind like the mindset a little bit, like when you're thinking of design, right? Um, is it kind of an intuition or is there uh, a method that you can look at and be like, okay, let's just start from the foundation. Here's what we need. Is that like, help us get in the mind of a designer? What, what comes yeah. first? No, I think there is a little bit of, of intuition. I mean, like what Brie was saying, I mean, I wouldn't have that same kind of relationship with anyone. I mean, I think we make such a great team because our personalities really mesh. Like we, we just get along so well and we're really good friends. And I feel like with design, it's like, you kind of have to have like a little bit of a base of, okay, okay, what, what kind of looks good? Like, you don't have to really put a finger on it, but you kind of have to look at something and say like, okay, this is good. This is vibing. This is feeling, you know, like it, it works. And so I think having that, I don't know if it's completely teachable, but just having that like innate kind of eye for things. But that being said, I think if you don't develop those skills, it can just be put to waste. And like, you might not even ever have the opportunity to um, kind of progress um, in, in that facet. But I do think that maybe someone who um, is like interested and like keeps looking like we love Pinterest and it's, you know, no idea is yeah. original. We love Pinterest. We want to, you know, get inspired by other people's designs all the time. And so I think just starting with like that desire to, you know, to see great design out, you're able to kind of develop your own sense of style and yeah. develop out, um, something that is like truly unique and very cool. So I guess that's like a yes and a no. I think it's innate for some people, but I do think that just by looking and inspiration, you're able to develop out, um, you know, something that, that can be an amazing design, if that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, it's interesting because, because what I'm hearing is reps too, right? And sometimes that's what it is. It's Mm -hmm. like, how do you become a good writer? Well, you read a lot. How do you become good at, you know, buying good deals? Well, you'll analyze a lot of deals. I'm curious though, you know, because it's a more, artistic and i know there's reps in in you know um the the things you're seeing on pinterest like get things that go together well etc I, I think it comes down often even sales right reps 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 uh, i don't know if you uh brie you want to add to that if you you feel that that that's more of how you would see it as well yeah i mean i think she, that was a great answer and i the reps things makes a lot of sense because when I was first doing my short-term rentals, even though I call myself a creative, it was still hard. Like it was still like felt painful. Whereas now when we do design, we've done it so many times on all these houses that it's like, okay, I know what to do. I know what, like in my mind, it comes easier. I know what to put into it. So it's just like, if you're starting with anything, you know, it's your, if it's your first property, you're going to take so much time to find the right property, to look at AirDNA look at all those numbers, then that'll come easier. Then same with design, just look at great short-term rentals, go on air DNA, look at a good market, look at the top properties, scroll through it, just get your mind familiar with great design. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about that too, because obviously design can be subjective, but, but at the same time, I, I think 
what you're saying is that the proof is also in the pudding too, right? Like if you look at top properties and I'll design a certain way, then it appeals to people a certain way at, 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 at a mass level. So if I'm working with you all, which I will be, um, how, you know, where do we start, right? Am I coming to you and I'm saying, hey, ladies, listen, <laughs> I know y'all are good and everything, but I got some of these ideas I want to get off my chest. Or is it like, hold on, Ruben, let us come up first with a little blueprint for you. Of, of what we think might be good for this property. Like, how does that interaction work? Because I, I think it's really important for us to understand, like, how can we work with you? What does that experience actually look like when you're working with a client? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So basically, from the beginning, people find us through lots of different mediums, but we will always just have you set up a call with us. We want to meet you face to face. And we usually like to ask you, you know, what's your what's your short term rental address? Um, people usually come to us either if they're under contract or they're looking in a specific region. If you already have a property that's, you know, ideal. Um, and so, yeah, come to us. We'll prepare like a free consultation. We'll talk to you about what your vision is. You know, we always want to take into account that this is your home at the end of the day. And if you have an idea, then we'll definitely take that into consideration. Um, but we know at the end that you're also paying us for um, you know, our ideas and for our insight. And so we'll also come up with, um, usually from that first call, we have three big design ideas. If you're in a specific region, it's like, okay, A, B, and C, we think all of these would look great. What, what do you think? And so, you know, we, we come up with these ideas, but you also decide. So it is very collaborative, um, but you can be as involved or as, you know, not involved as you, as you want. Got it. So uh, very interesting. So uh, you mentioned the timing, which is interesting, um, you know, and I think it's important. Is it more of when I am about to make a purchase or put in an offer? Is it when I'm, I'm under contract? When, when do you feel based on your experience, when is a good time and when is a bad time uh, to, to involve you? Yeah, I think ideally the perfect time would be under contract. You feel pretty confident that the lending is going to go through that would be ideal because then we can design while you're under contract, you close, the designs are finished, you purchase everything right away. And that way you can get up your short-term rental as soon as possible. So you're not just um, paying mortgages without cash flow coming in. And that yeah. would be ideal. But if you already have a property and you know, you're about to, like, you're closing on it, like, and you're hiring us, like right after you close, that's fine too. For our design, we do offer three services. We offer two services that are remote design. One, one service is in person. We do the setup. But for the remote design, that takes us two weeks. So you get started with us two weeks. That's why it's perfect when you're under contract, kind of towards the end of being under contract, two weeks of design, go for it and purchase. Yeah. But Now, I know you guys are very, you know, you go deep with the whole taking into account, you know, air DNA and, and understanding like what 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 it's going to take and and that's something that i personally as a short term mental investor and operator i look at my design budget and i factor that into my numbers right what what is um best practice is it you know to you know if someone's out there is thinking and i know this is going to be different on a case by case but you know am i giving a swag like a estimated number in my head when I'm thinking as an investor of how much I'm going to spend after having consulted with you? Or is it something that I should just factor in, you know, at a high level, you know, and then you guys tell me the real number and I'm like, Ooh, actually, okay, great. So it's, it's going to be a little bit more, or it's going to actually be, be less. Like what's the, what's the right way tactically so that, you know, we understand how, what what's best to work with you guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're investors too. Like mm -hmm. you're not going to make somebody spend money just to spend money. And it also depends on the market. Like some markets will give you a better return. And so go for it. Cause those markets are usually more competitive too. Like if it's a really yeah. hot market, then your competition is doing a lot. They're having, you know, fire pits in the backyard. They have hot tubs, they have all this stuff. So if it's a hot market, you're going to get a great return. We're going to advise you to put the money in because you're always going to be better off when you're in that top competing percentile. You know, you look at air DNA and there's a big jump if you're in the 50th percentile versus the 75th versus the 80th. Like those are big jumps and it's going to give you a return. That's why like we love 
like what we do, because you're not just paying us and the money's going away. You're paying us and the money is coming back to you. Yeah. Like, what, what would, yeah. What would you say tactically if you're someone's listening to this? Cause I think this is a good, we're, we're speaking at it at a high level, but if you're literally speaking, okay, this is the, these are the kind of items that we've seen again, depends from area to area, but like, what kind of things should I be investing in when I'm thinking experience, when I'm thinking vacation rental, have you guys seen across the board is like, you know what common denominator, Ruben, this really works and you should not cheap out on blank. Is there, are there any, anything that comes to mind first when I said that? Yeah. I mean, our first thing that we always encourage people, it's like, do not cheap out on the, the backyard, you know, the, the outdoor spaces and that's usually like with the rentals that we've done that's usually the hero shot we want to really have like a wow factor in the in the backyard and so like Bree said like we love you know incorporating fire pits hot tubs you know outdoor activities games um you know if it's appropriate you know putting greens like we always try to make like that backyard really really stand out and because mm. people we we don't want this just to be a place for people to sleep this is going to be a place where they can gather, make memories and have an overall great experience. So I would say probably backyard space is, is kind of like our, <laughs> our go-to, you know, focal point, but would you say the same Brie? Yeah, definitely. Again, depending yeah. on the market, if you're in a cabin, exactly. old, something different, but yeah, most spaces. And that makes you stand out. Like a lot of the competition actually isn't focusing on the backyard. They're just making comfortable beds and a good mm -hmm. place to sleep. But if you're going beyond and activities go into that too, like if you have a game room, if you have a movie room, what makes you stand out so you can charge a premium because people are going to be looking for that. And like, take, for example, a mom booking for their family. They're going to look at that game room and think that'll be so fun for my family to be there and play games together. Book yeah. it, you know, yeah. they'll pay more for it's it. The emotion. Mm -hmm. Emotion experience. Well, for numbers wise, what is the biggest budget that you've had to spend on uh, on your you know most recent projects or just one that stands out to you just so we have context because someone will be listening you're like oh yeah that's 10 grand right and you're thinking like no 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 like what's that number so we can really put some things into context here as far as how important it is yeah I mean I don't want to scare anybody but it's all <laughs> about like that return okay so we have a mm -hmm. house in Virginia it's a six bedroom house six bath like three common areas, like living rooms, a game room. Like it is a big house. It is in mm -hmm. McGackiesville and which is like Virginia, Shenandoah Valley. This house is like the top house on the mountain, right by the ski resort. Like it is the house. So the budget for it is 90 grand. Um, although, okay, wait, let me jump back because 90 grand also includes all the contractor stuff. The budget for the furniture was 65 grand. Um, so that furnishes that big house and we'll give suggested budgets. Like when you reach out to us and give you your, give us like your address, then we will look at the, how many bedrooms it is, give you like the suggested budget. And as investors, we always advise to give an overestimate too. like things. Yeah. Will come up. You don't want to take the time. day to like, yeah. okay, I'm going to plan for this and it's going to be more, no, like plan for more and hope, you know, have it go Hopefully down. It's less. Yeah. yeah it is. What? Mm -hmm. What would be the, you know, how in real estate, you know, we got like price and price per room, price per square footage, all that stuff. What do you think is the uh, sweet spot? Again, we're, we're talking vacation markets here, vacation rental markets. What do you think is the sweet spot per spend per room? If I'm starting blank slate, is there yeah. a number that you could put so out there? Again, we're not holding you to it. We're just curious. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, we usually say five grand per bedroom. And then four grand for a living room, three grand for a dining room slash kitchen area. And then if you have other common areas, like if you have a game room, a game room is usually five grand. A backyard space really can differ depending on the size, but like, yeah. let's just say another 10 grand for the backyard. But what is a little trickier. So furniture is a little bit easier for us to calculate because we've done this over and over again, but mm -hmm. then you'll have contractors involved and people ask us all the time, how much does it? cost to build a fire pit well i don't know like contractors in phoenix are a little bit cheaper than contractors in like the middle of nowhere shenandoah valley like yeah. 
that's trickier. So, I mean, get quotes from people, but furniture is pretty much, we can guess, you know, give a good <laughs> overestimate of what it'll take. Got it. And I'm so glad you brought that up from a contracting perspective, because you guys are, I, I feel like are full service, but how much do I have? Do, do I get involved? Do I just sign the check? Do you want me to sign off and make those decisions on the contractors? And then you kind of pick up the baton. How does that work? Yeah, it really depends on what package you choose to, to hire us with. So if it's completely remote, we basically source everything and then hand it over to you. And then you're going to be responsible to hire out the contractors, you know, make sure everything is implemented. Um, but if we are coming out in person, then that package, we're able to take the reins on, on essentially everything. So, um, you know, hiring out the contractors, managing them. Um, we we would also do all of the ordering for you. So again, you can oh. be as involved or not involved as you would like. Um, obviously, we're going to run by, you know, all of the budget things with you and, yeah. and you know, like the okays before we put in the orders. But, but yeah, so so that's like the kind of nice thing about yeah. the packages that we offer. We usually encourage people where it's like their very first short term rental to do the one where we're least involved. So you can kind of, you know, get your hands dirty, see what it's really like um just for a great learning process so it really does range depending on what service you choose god jordan jordan what's the timeline too on that um because if i'm listening to this i'm like okay i'm under contract let me get a contact let's get a consult call going again with all things considered like contractors there's like vendors involved like what it, you know and i think rehabbing homes they say if you're really good at it like maybe six months for design for context again no promises everyone's situation is different. What's that sweet spot that you guys are looking like to, you know, when you're forecasting for your client to be like, again, we're talking about empty house here. Yeah. So I'll kind of give like an estimate of, of like a house where like, we're probably not going to do any big renovations, but maybe just yeah. like cosmetic upgrades, like maybe just switching out like a vanity light or, um, you know, other light fixtures, paint, wallpaper, that kind of thing. So like we mentioned, we will do a two week turnaround time for the actual design. And then we, once you close, you know, ideally it will, we'll give probably like two to three to four weeks for everything to ship and get there. When things are shipping, that's when we like to have, you know, contractors on site, making sure that they're doing their paint job and then like the light fixtures, plumbing, anything needed. And then we'll, we'll probably, you know, if we were going to go out or if someone else was, you know, setting up the property, we would say an additional about a week. So in all, we're probably looking anywhere between like six to eight weeks, um, all in project. Um, but that's, you know, of course, if everything's running yeah, smoothly with like the lending and everything. Smooth. So, yeah. So, but that, that's like, you know, our, our goal when we, when we start the conversation. That's awesome. So, okay. So, um, very interesting. So at this time right now, it's you guys who are, um, you know, again, you have different packages, virtual and onsite. You wouldn't tackle more than one project at a time now, would you? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh -oh. we, I mean, we, we do do multiple projects yeah. simultaneously. One, but we usually do like about like one big one a month, but we are yeah. definitely looking to grow and expand. And so we don't really put ourselves like in a box or with a cap. And so yeah. Um, just kind of comes like as the clients come and so far we've been able to manage that with just the two of us, but, um, but yeah, we're, we're doing lots of projects simultaneously, usually like smaller ones. And then one, you know, large one where we go out physically at least like once a month. Wow. So you're all really wearing a lot of different hats here, like project <laughs> managers, program managers, interior designers, marketers. Do you guys set up listings as well or no? Is that in the package? No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Who's got the marketing background here? Is that you? You got to throw that in there. I pay people to do that. Seriously. I know. Well, okay. good copy. No, no. Let me just add on your plate while I'm at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's something that we've thought about because I mean, honestly, we've had clients ask us and we've offered it. It's not something that we advertise. We've done it, but maybe in the future, you know, if we like want to do the full package, well, yeah, you you heard it here first, y'all. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> We I'm have things it. in the work, you know, but we got to just kind of get the business, I don't know, yeah. more comfortable. And then we'll, we'll start going into those different areas. No, again, yeah. Go, get really good at like one thing, 
you don't want to split yourself um and yeah. then you know as you come in add extra verticals that's really i was just curious because you know there's like full you know this is i mean you guys have the opportunity again this is me from a, being a business owner just to go from like like white glove like um you know fly to you and everything is taken care of that that's really cool um so brie what's your favorite piece because i'll tell you i got a favorite piece in every property i gotta have an egg chair um that's <laughs> that's my thing I check out all of our properties like ruin and it's like expensive too but i'm like no we gotta have an egg chair here at least yeah. so what's what's the Bree's favorite favorite piece and then at the same time jordan we're getting right to you don't you worry but then at the same time i also want to ask you know your favorite piece might not be what the marketplace is going so i want to hear both sides like what do you what do you think is really picking up in the marketplace right now and then personally what's your favorite piece that you like to have in a property if you're designing it for yourself or for a family member like you would have to have this piece in there yeah, that's a great question. First of all, Jordan's brainstorming. I can see her. I, know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I was going to commend you on the egg chair because we love a good egg chair. Our <laughs> philosophy is design these houses so that it doesn't feel like your own house because who wants to go on vacation and just go to a house that feels exactly like their own. Absolutely. So have fun elements. Usually you don't have an egg chair in your own living room. Like that's fun. Um, but I would say my favorite piece is are neon signs. We we love a good neon, neon signs. Sign. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. What does that mean? What's a neon sign? So you know, like neon, like you. So we we have Instagram walls. Like pretty much every property we do, we want to incorporate like an Instagram moment where our guests can take. Oh, pictures, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, fun. the neon, like the desert dreams. Yes. No so you yes. see that property. Yeah. So we oh, usually find a wall in the house and we'll put a really <laughs> cool mural or wallpaper or something cool put some chairs in front of it or a couch mm. so people can sit down put a really cool neon sign with a tagline like we've done desert dreams and phoenix and there's Fort the marketing Hill. we did yeah, yeah. And you can tie this into your name, like your property name and your Wi-Fi name, your Wi-Fi password. Like it all can be one theme, the marketing. Mm. So that yeah. I love. And we have like our Fort Lauderdale one was high tides and good vibes, a pink neon sign, yeah, a big fresh. pink neon yeah, sign. Fresh. Kind of fun. Oh, that's that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. And then what, what piece do you think is, well, actually, I'll let you think on that marketplace top piece. I'm going to go to Jordan. Jordan, what you got for us as in like your favorite piece in the property? Ooh, well, I know Brie mentioned that like my whole back, well, my background is interior design, but also in art curation. So I've worked yeah. in like museum settings, gallery settings. Wow. I, lo I love, I love a good piece of art. So it's something that's overlooked a lot of the time, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, oh, it's just a blank wall, you know, whatever. It's not a necessity but it really ties the room together. It, it has um, a certain element that is, that is interesting that can maybe speak to like your local inspiration to the location. It, it can mm. definitely like set the vibe in room or, um, you know, feeling in a room. So yeah. I love artwork. I definitely spend a lot of time like sourcing artwork for every single property that is, that's very cool and fits the theme. So probably like my favorite is is sourcing the artwork for every every space that's a good one and now i'm gonna act like i'm dangerous in this space and, and i'm not but you know i gotta i'm trying to you know you raise the bar so am i going with like a like when i'm thinking of a space i just i want to learn how to think differently i want to i want to be mm -hmm. like y'all right be like jordan be like mike <laughs> so <laughs> let me yeah very little pun there so let when I'm thinking of a bright colored room, am I thinking like dark art or am I thinking like making the art like match with the chairs or am I not even thinking correctly? Like, tell me, Ruben, you're not even thinking about this the right way. I mean, I kind of go about it looking at like the overall design vision. So, okay. Oh we gosh, just, you're such a visionary. <laughs> you kind of have to, you kind of have to think broad. So, okay. I just did like a primary bedroom in, in Phoenix, Arizona. So yeah. I knew that like, primary bedroom. This is where mom and dad are going to stay. We probably want to do it a little bit more elevated, maybe not as colorful in here, but definitely mm. want to make it interesting. So our color scheme was like some green, some burnt orange, tans, whites, mm. blacks. 
And so I actually sourced artwork that had, that was photography that all like pictures of like these cool, like old, like um, Spanish missions and like Spanish architecture. So like, it was like kind of cool, modern, but very different. We kind of had a overarching like Spanish modern um, design for the entire home. And so that's like the artwork that I, that I sourced for that room. So okay. again, kind of sticking to that, we have like a inspiration board that we look at every time we do a design. And so kind of referring back to the design inspiration, the color scheme, and then that's kind of how I source the artwork, but we want to keep it on theme. We don't want something just random that doesn't make sense for the space. It's so funny because as I'm looking on summer led dot designs on your Instagram, I can kind of like see whose personality was involved in like what came together now that you're mentioning. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm looking at the neon signs. I'm like, yep, that's Brie. And then I'm like looking at like um, just some of the art here and like, I'm like, yeah, that that looks that's not look, look like Jordan. So it's really cool to see how you guys have like expressed yourself in the art. Uh, who's the wallpaper geek here? Is it? I mean, is this like a standard? Because I'm a geek of like wallpaper. Is that like a standard, or like one of you guys are like geek out on it more than the other? Yeah. No, I think we both like it's it. It's a standard. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's always a must. It, it really photographs so well. Like if you that's have so that good. that piece on the wall it just makes the yeah. wall pop it adds like that accent wall so yeah kind of a standard for our short-term rental design yeah I think mm-hmm. it's like one of the biggest things you could do like and I don't know why I'm, I'm speaking here I have you guys so I should be asking all the questions but I'd love to hear like that that one wallpaper behind like the headboard that that pop you know I personally think that's like one of the things if I'm thinking like okay like not that I don't ever want to say that you should be short on budget or have a tight budget but sometimes maybe that's the reality like I'm thinking that's a go-to, that's a must. What all, What else are some musts that you're, you know, as we're speaking on this topic, you're like, yep, like this is a must, that's a must so that we can kind of get like the core pillars of like how you guys think about design. Yeah, yeah. there's, I would say there's some hospitality things too that are a must that really bug mm-hmm. me if an Airbnb doesn't have them because okay. you want your, your guests to be comfortable. So a bedroom, like, you should have a mirror because everybody's going to be sharing bathrooms, like put a mirror in there, put a dresser. Like some people love taking their stuff out of a suitcase, put a TV. I know it adds up to have a TV in each bedroom, but just some people are TV watchers and they like feel uncomfortable in their bed without a TV or nightstands and lamps. So some of those things are hospitality stuff. Also, oh, in a bedroom, have like a chair or some seating so they don't have to like sit on the bed to put their shoes on. That's Mm. like the must for hospitality. Then for design, yeah, like the wallpaper. I think that really makes it pop. And I would say too, going into a design, we're going to think through what are your wow moments? Like what are your first five photos that are going to be on Airbnb? Because, you know, you definitely shouldn't go chronologically through your house of like front Mm. entry dining room like you know you shouldn't yeah. go it's not a real estate listing exactly like outside of the house so like all your like eggs up front like what are you offering show your backyard show your great living room so think through what are your wow moments and that's where you should put the budget a bathroom you're not going to show a bathroom until photo number like 40 of 50 mm. like you're not going to show the bathroom and what's different than real estate too is you don't really show the front of the house in an airbnb listing so the curb appeal side of it you don't need to spend that much money unless your strategy is like refinancing later on and that will help an appraisal. But for an Airbnb hmm. listing, that's not that important. Or even the, the kitchen. Surprisingly enough, like the kitchen isn't super important in an Airbnb listing. Um, really? It can be later on. You can have a really cool game room and a backyard and really cool bedrooms and then show the kitchen like midway through your photos. That's mm-hmm. such a good call out. I didn't yeah. even think about that, the kitchen thing. Like in, in real estate, you're like kitchen sell, but you're thinking your experiences sell. And yeah, it sounds like and gathering spaces for mm. sure. Like think like like living room, like you don't want just like a little tiny sofa with like one chair. Like this is where people are gonna be gathering. So you want to make sure you get, you know, a large sectional, few sofas, lots of accent chairs. You know, those those are your selling points. You want to gather, you want to have a dining room table that accommodates you know, all the people that will be able to sleep in the home. So we can all gather together. So that just goes into the overall experience of the, of the design. 
Very interesting. So if I were to ask you like a, a super loaded question, so I'll give you for fair warning, you know, you know, what's, <laughs> what's the biggest kind of, um, we'll, we'll start with the negative downfall of an SDR investor um, in this space. Um, what would you say that is? And obviously we can tie in design kind of like throwing you a lob here. Yeah. I actually have a really good case study and example mm-hmm. of it. So I think the Airbnb industry is changing so much. It started out by rent your basement, rent whatever mm-hmm. space you have and just give like a warm body, a place to sleep. Like it was like mm-hmm. sleep on my couch, but it has changed drastically. And I think it's going to continue to change to, it is a business. Like you are a hospitality business. And so the competition is getting steeper. So yeah. people are falling flat by just doing the bare minimum because you're not going to get booked out. Like during the slow season, you're not going to get booked out. Cause like those people who are doing better, they're going to get booked out when it's slow and you won't be, or even during peak season, like you won't be able to charge the premium. So the downfall is when people think they can just put a sofa and a bed and get it, you know, at RC willies and it doesn't match and just do like the average. Um, so the case study I was talking about, we um, have a property in Fort Lauderdale, my husband and I, and the house, it was an Airbnb before. So my husband did all of his research. He knew that property was making 150 K in revenue per year. So 150 K and how many bedrooms it's four bedrooms. It's a pretty standard Florida house, just like a rambler four bedrooms has a pool in the backyard. That was 150 K. So he's like, okay, I know we're going to make at least that, like, obviously we're going to make more, but so the, pictures these people just put in a random sofa everything that i'm talking about like the bare minimum so we went in and we did design and we got it set up the end of september and already for the year of 2023 we are at 150k in revenue and we've only wow. gotten like 25% of booking not even that like 20% of the year booked out so we nice. have another 80% so we are going to in 2023 double what they did just by putting in great design and kind of a cool story about the design on this house. And my husband, like he does the investing. Um, I obviously passed it off before we go under contract, but his vision for the space was, I want to do a really cool modern beach house. And then Jordan and I went in, did our market research, and we found that tons of bachelorette parties are going there. And this house is right on the border of a town called Wilton Manors, which is the number one travel to location for the LGBTQ community. And we've actually driven through it. And it's like drag queen, drag queen. Like it's all about that. It's really cool. So we said, let's do this feminine. Let's do a Miami retro take on this and do pinks and greens and make it really fun. And the funny thing is, I don't even think I told my husband, like, I think I just (laughs) forgot to tell him that we're taking this design direction. We're not doing modern beach. We're doing like fun Miami retro. So he showed up to the house and we're setting it up. And he's like, there's a lot of pink in here. I'm like, oh yeah, (laughs) like there's a lot of pink. And he's like, okay, I trust you guys. I trust you guys. And it is getting booked out like crazy because we did that market research. We found a target audience and it's getting booked out far in advance because it's like an experience. People are booking it out in like summer of 2023 because it's way different than anything else. And it's what they want. And that's what we love that our market research going into product that. market fit product market fit i'm curious for you both jordan you know what are you building on that and piggybacking off of, of that like that market research how do you consult someone on how they should do that research because i can go to air dna i can look at top properties and i can look at the same zip code and i can see they're all getting you know booked is there you know, again, this might be a loaded question, but like, is it, what are you looking at? Is it a specific events? Is it like specific area? Like how do I define, you know, you can't serve everybody, right? Is it, am I going for the bachelor, bachelorette? Am I going for the family that wants to get away and they're snowbirds? Like what, what do you guys, what advice would you give when it comes to doing that market research? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And that's something that we actually dive into, you know, buy property with our like free consultation is we actually do some, you know, broad market research from the get go and say like, okay, this is what we're seeing in the market. And then this is based off that this is what we would go in terms of the design. So we were actually just discussing this like with with a client like, okay, 
if you're in Nashville, like, are we going to do bachelorette theme, like just go all out? Or are we going to do something that is a little bit more versatile that like lots of different people can, can come and stay. And it really is like a fine balancing act. And again, I think it really depends on the market, but you know, if you were to just go all in, like on that bachelorette party, kind of like what Bree mentioned, like for, with that Fort Lauderdale um, yeah. property, you know that you're going to be booked out every weekend and can charge that premium. And so you kind of will have to see like, okay, if I can charge this much, like every single weekend, you know, it's going to be booked out every single weekend, maybe not during the week, like maybe a more safe neutral design would, um, it could balance out or it could be very significantly, um, you know, different in terms of your return. So it, it is a balancing act and it really does depend on, on the market and like where you are regionally, but, but we will do like the research. Okay. Like you're located, you know, I'm just taking like Phoenix, for example, you do have bachelors, but then you also have, um, you know, like the waste management open and you have, um, you know, lots of great restaurants and golfing. And, and so we, we do look at that, but then we try to think, okay, who is the client that's going to make us the most in this yeah. region? So is it, and I'd, I'd love to, to, to um, kind of open that thought up for a second, just cause you're, you're in the lab. It's a safe space. Let's, let's unravel that for a second. Is it, do you want to be in, is it a balancing act or do you actually see that, you know, your clients and your own properties that, you know, when you go all in, like, do I go and do a Star Wars home? And I'm like, I'm catering to these kids. I'm close to Disney. This is what we're doing. Like, do you do that? And do you feel that it's better? Because again, we talk about niches and stuff. Do you feel that that's the best approach to go all in or be like, no, like, we don't know yet. Let's just please, please every or, or multiple avatars. I'm just curious here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say if, you can, like Jordan was saying, if there's the clientele to book every weekend, there's enough clientele, I would go all in. How Person. do you know that? How do you know uh, if there's enough clientele? If there's enough clientele, just based on air DNA, like our, like bachelorette party, for example, if you're in Nashville, there's thousands of bachelorette party, like themed homes. So people are doing it. You know that they're getting booked out. You can see on air DNA, they're getting booked out. So great. I'm going to be a better bachelorette party place. And these people are going to charge a premium because bachelorette parties, they're looking to spend money. They have a group of girls and they're all going to split the cost. And I want a really great photo moment house. And they don't want just like a random, like neutral home. So I would look at the market research. So take Disney for another example. If there's a good amount of other people doing Disney, then you know, there's the clientele for it. And mm -hmm. I would just go all in on that. Um, I mean, like, yes, you're going to have slower weekdays and you can drop your price a ton and maybe get a few people on the weekdays, but the weekends, like just, just run the numbers. Like just say, if you're getting booked out for a weekend at this much, and there's the, the number of weeks in a year, like just look to see what that would be versus if you're getting booked out like 80, 80% 80 of the year, you know, those weekdays included, but at a lower rate. Yeah, that, that's such an important point. I'm so glad we went there. And Jordan, thanks for helping us get there. Because I think the point I want to bring home is that was my biggest thing when before I got into short term rentals is, you know, you need to start thinking like a business owner and in, in the hospital, you're in the hospitality business, right? And so, exactly. you know, when you start thinking just like a traditional investor, you're like, well, no, I want to have the maximized occupancy but then when you start looking at you know i'm pretty sure the hotel industry hospitality they're like at a 65 percent or somewhere close to 55 percent occupied like occupancy that's those are their numbers but if you look at the kind of rates that they charge whether it's like a suite whether you know your triple diamond or whatever it is that they have they have their different tiers you're looking at the numbers like wait that ends up adding up more than what you would make if you were like 80 percent booked a like 100 bucks a night and i think that's where the mm -hmm. power of the math is and understanding your numbers and the data and this is why you guys are crushing it and you're going to crush it is because you understand that and therefore you're able to also design that well and appeal to the person that's coming in between those doors yeah no slam dunk i had to i had yeah. to i had to give y'all one look at that right at the top of the hour <laughs> so so ladies listen i'm gonna be tuning into what y'all are doing i'm really appreciative of the fact that we got a chance to talk about you know the background you know how y'all came together how y'all um are using your unique geniuses to 
and obviously calculated, um, you know, marketplace data to then make your decisions, which I think is the best combination you can do, right? Understanding the numbers, but then also understanding intuition, like, and understanding design, like having that touch. I think that's what makes you successful in this business. Uh, what, uh, you know, biggest, uh, we talked about the biggest misconception or, or not the biggest misconception, but uh, what, what makes people or, you know, not have as much success in this space is because they're not willing to invest, et cetera. Um, let's, go on the other side and end on a high note um i'll start with you jordan like what do you think is the biggest uh kind of success denominator that you've seen again within this sub niche of design that you would want to like um that that maybe gets overlooked sometimes right um that you would want to leave us with and um you know brie i'll give you some time to think as well <laughs> well i think just just being broad that that design it pays off you know whether you hire us to do it, or you just take the time in order to, to put an extra effort into creating a vision and creating a design, it, it really does pay off at the end of the day. And I mean, I guess this is just kind of like a good way to wrap up our conversation with a nice bow that that's a, that's a good reminder is, is design will pay off. We, you know, we, we know this is an investment. The goal is to make money and design is a great, you know, way in order to help you reach those goals. Yeah, with respect to the asset class, like if you're in this space, you you know, you need to rethink about how those dollars, it's not a cost. It is an investment, mm -hmm. like you said, because you will get that a higher is. ROI. Like that six hundred dollar egg chair, y'all, shoot. <laughs> you no know? oh, joke. Yeah. I mean, you're thinking like six hundred, yeah, yeah. Facts, right? Uh, you need that. So thank you for putting that together. And now Bree, uh, any additional thoughts on that like what's the biggest you know thing that we can kind of maybe an oversight that is is driving your clients and yourselves to success within the niche of design that you want to highlight as we wrap this up yeah and I think I'm going to take a little bit of an investment approach as well because that plays into all of it like people I think the it's kind of a success and a downfall. It's the fear when people are fearful and just stay within their comfort zone of investing. Like you live in Ohio, I'm just going to invest in a neighboring town, but then those people, okay, they're going to make some cash flow. but it's the people who do all the research, get comfortable with it and go out of that comfort zone. You know, it's got to be backed by research. There's great resources of influencers who talk about this and everything to give you that confidence, but then they go into a good market. Like yeah. In, the market is so important. So people who do the work, do the analysis, invest in a good market and also the home, like the property you can, it just, there's so many things that add up, but like, if you get a good deal on it in a good market, have a good lender, then hire us for a designer to then have a great property. Then on top of that, have good management tactics. If it's yourself, then, you know, pricing is so key. Don't just put a flat rate on every single night, like price it so that you are, you know, optimizing your weekends and your weekdays and the holidays and all these things. There's a big recipe, but when you like at least touch on all the points, you're going to have success when you follow that recipe. So mm. I would just advise people to not be fearful and learn and ask questions and, pay mentors too. Like my husband and I, we paid a mentor shout out to Michael Elefante here, but yeah, we paid him, he taught us and <laughs> it has paid off because he helped us with that confidence to put ourselves out there and go beyond our comfort. hundred percent. You literally put it on, the, you tied it all together. You know, you, you need ingredients to have successful experiments and your coaches, people who have been there, like you guys, which, you know, I always look at when I trade places with what they've accomplished, with what they've done. If the answer is yes, let me take that recipe. Let's stir the pot and let's let's build, right? Uh, listen, Experiment Nation might kill me if I don't ask you guys this because I have you here while we're in a lab. So right now, your top three to three favorite markets or even four if you want each and and why. Just real quick, punchy, just want to hear from y'all because they're going to be like, you just said influencers are telling us I got the influencers right here and they're practitioners as well. <laughs> Why not hear it from y'all? Where should we be looking? Tell the people, come on, just experiment nation. No one, no, no one will know. I'll go Our off secret. of my own properties. I'm biased. Yeah. I have <laughs> areas, but I love Phoenix. 
I mean, Phoenix is really great with the regulations. Home prices are pretty reasonable and yeah. lots of people travel there. So Phoenix, um, you know, Florida, there's really great areas. Again, regulations are great, like permitting, things like that. So Fort Lauderdale, love that market. I'm biased. I have properties there. Um, but I'll go outside of my own properties. Nashville, it's trickier to get into. There's, you know, very much like zoned. You have to have a zoned apartment, all these different things. But if you can get in Nashville, it's just like going to last forever. There's going to always be people coming there. I'm hoping in the near future, we can find a good opportunity there because it's fun. Design is fun. You're going to have really great occupancy there. Yeah. Nashville's where it's at. Um, no. It's, yeah. In Florida. I mean, you named all of my favorite places. But then what you got? <laughs> You got a gem Honestly, for us? Which you taking us to the Bahamas? Where are we going? <laughs> I wish that'd be awesome. But no, I mean, I I love those markets too. I mean, I think free hit it on the head. Um, we we've been out to the East Coast, like to um, we went to Albrightsville out in Pennsylvania. That was really fun, like good change of pace in terms of like the design direction. Um, but those three spots, like Phoenix, Nashville. In Florida, I mean, it is so fun to design for those for those spots. I mean, it's a I vacation. Know. We know, you know, who who's going to be booking. It is it's so fun for us to really think outside the box, get really creative, and come up with like a really great design. So that's super rewarding for us to come up with something in in those regions because it's such a blast. I love it, and I'm just looking at your wall here, like the the in infinite um, infinity. I think it's infinity pool. I'm not sure actually, but I'm always the one in Scottsdale. What does that say? Mini in Scottsdale. Um, what does that say? Let me see here. That's such a nice design. I'm looking at your Instagram right now. That one in Phoenix is always is with that that wallpaper or that wall design outside the pool. So dope. Oh, you guys gotta check you. it out. I'll post it thanks. on my story right now. I'll, I'll repost awesome. it. Yeah, I gotta check this thanks. out. Listen, ladies, it's been more than real. I cannot wait to be working with y'all. You know what's crazy, guys? Like every time I say these things on Experiment Nation, like it happens. Like I've had so many people come in and we'll also be like, yeah, like we're gonna work together, do something. It it, I, it always happens. So it's kind of like a good luck chuck. We'll make it happen. Um, awesome. we'll make sure we time that. But no, ladies, like you're killing it. You guys want to make sure you check out summerled.designs on Instagram. And then your website as well is summerled designs. That's with an S at the end dot com. And make sure you get yourselves taken care of by these two rock stars here, Bree and Jordan, who are taking this thing to the moon, man. When, when you guys get your next deal out there, I'm investing with y'all. So um, <laughs> listen, um, thank you so much for stepping into the lab. And just like that, we are out. <laughs>